but uh, what what would be the moving forward idea? I mean, obviously, like in, infiltration is done, but what's the what's the the overall disruption part of the plan that you guys are going to enact? Or is that something so, you guys think you need to talk about before we get into it? Uh, yeah, I think we need to kind of finally discuss what the fuck we're going to do in the city. <laughs> yeah. So so maybe that's a conversation that needs to happen before we make contact with this with this Mayor Garfield character. And I think Morello probably would say we you know, we need to have a plan like we're here to help, but we need to know what's being done already so that we know where we can help the best. Um but that's very forward thinking of her. You know, she's been she's been having uh, more thoughts as of late. Um, yes, I said that correctly. Uh, so I think that as well. Marilla probably says like, you know, the number one priority is to, you know, the armies like retaking the city. That's our number one priority. So we have a mission, but we need to know how to integrate and possibly use, you know the the fighters that the resistance has in our favor to accomplish that mission All right, and then i think off, Morello probably would not use the word integrate uh true she probably also <laughs> says and we need to find anders right to to tap to kind of cap that off mm, boom because so, she has a very clear mission herself so in terms of disruption setting buildings on fire I would actually be pretty excited about not burning down my city. It's already full of horrifying monsters, and that's probably caused as much damage as we need. You sure? Because I'm really good at it. Bring up yeah, the that's kind of what I'm concerned about. No, I'm sure there are you know, people we can burn down who have it coming. Alright, so are you thinking just strategic assassinations? Couldn't hurt. Uh, I think we want to see... Well, it's been a little while since I was in here. We'll see if how the uh, lines of communication are going between the what resistance groups we have. Mm -hmm. See how quickly be... we can mobilize them and how fluidly we can do that. It also might be a good idea to find out if we can get an idea of what's going on topside. I'm sure we'll be headed there ourselves soon enough, but yes. Before we actually start making a plan, we might want to have a little bit of a small expedition ourselves first. All right, so do you want to meet with Garfield or not? Let's uh, meet with him, yeah. Couldn't hurt. Okay. Does anybody else have, like, it, it's Jericho and Hannibal talking, and Marilla's kind of agreeing she likes that line of thinking. Um, does anybody else chime in at any point? Farseer Obek is uh, not the best at grand scale planning. <laughs> Okay, fair. Um, Aeon's not a tactician. Okay. To say the least. Right. But she um, probably has strong opinions on the proper treatment of people. Which brings me to my next point. She's probably already tapped out of this conversation, and if there's anyone who in the general vicinity looks uh, ill and or upset, she's already helping them. I, I think <laughs> that every every individual that you see in this town yeah, looks so a bit ill. Too. So she's got a tall order to fill. So she's already like going group to group uh, in the lamplight, assisting where she can. If yeah. you need her, you can come find her. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Daniela probably remains with the group of you for now, um, even though she seems a bit wary about letting Aelin kind of go off and wander. Uh, oh. She does understand the importance of what's going on right here, right now. Hello, Dawn. Um. Hello, hello Dawn. Also. To be fair, she would also be, you know, like Aelin does, chatting with all of these people as well, picking up as many little tidbits of their personal stories of what happened to them as possible, and would bring that back to the group uh, when she when she gets home. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Dalton, are you alive? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, you're at the Resistance Village. And you're having a discussion about what the fuck you guys are supposed to do inside the city. Okay. Um, I think that Daniela probably chimes in, though, 
to this conversation and probably says, um, it seems that striking the lieutenants, the middle, mid-level enemies would be beneficial for us. It would not be strong enough that we run the risk of endangering ourselves and would cause enough confusion within the ranks, hopefully. It seems like if the units are anything like we saw back there, and she kind of, you know, makes mention of the previous battle, um, she says, if we can find these necromancers or leaders, perhaps daemons, take out the, cut off the head, as they say, it will send them into disarray perhaps make them less effective but as well we need to figure out a way to allow the armies to move in assailing Middenheim from the exterior is no small task that'd be a good idea to split the group that's almost never a good idea you sure you've done this before NPCs that way the rest of us this way <laughs> Oh, I see. <laughs> Would help us move faster. Yeah. And maybe have them investigate ways into the city hmm. while the rest of us are uh, finding key figures. Well, I've known ways into the city from places like this since I was single digits in age. Do you know ways that a whole army can get in? Not from down here, but I didn't think we were planning to come up through the catacombs. Isn't that sort of the point here? We're looking for ways to open the doors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or at least facilitate the, the armies uh, moving moving through. Um, it might be good in that case. Yeah, and actually... Maybe, uh, maybe it'd be a good idea for us to have an assault on the gate from the inside. So I'm sure you all remember this map. Uh, oh... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Throwback Friday. Rip Josh. Uh, this is the first map the group ever saw ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's my hovel. Yeah. Look. Oh, God, the Piggly Wiggly. The Piggly Wiggly. Now a big <laughs> ah, yes, the legendary oh, Piggly yeah. Wiggly. Oh, my God, it's the Tanner where I tried to get them to... Didn't I try to get him to make Skaven heads into something? Uh, I thought you tried to, like, make him make you gloves or something but yeah um so this is this is for for those the uninitiated this is middenheim uh as it stands above obviously below the catacombs are not particularly mapped um <laughs> and there are uh there are three main entrances onto middenheim you can see uh there's the west gate uh the north gate and the south gate um, couple of things to note. There used to be an east gate, uh, but the bridge and has since collapsed. It collapsed during the, uh, they actually specifically collapsed it during the Red Plague, uh, and the war with the Skaven, uh, as, so they couldn't assault. Um, there's also, uh, there's a path that is over here, uh, by the North Garden that, uh, has also been collapsed at the time. It was, uh, a path that was created, by uh, the Skaven to try and attempt to get over here and uh, it was collapsed on purpose and since they, they actually took out like because the walls used to extend out to like they used to be straight across here uh, but they had to blow up this portion of the uh, of the path and walls and recreate um, the walls as you see them now so uh, a bit of turmoil in the past so but that does lend to, like, how things were assaulted in the past as well. Um, and kind of the options that the people inside have, right? Generally, one of the three main pathways is how you get into the city. But as you all know, there are kind of other methods of doing that. But moving entire armies is hard enough. Which, which gate is our army? Let's so, the army would most likely want to use the south gate. Because they are... The south gate right here. Um, mm -hmm. Because they are approaching from the south. Okay, oh, I forget. I could communicate with... Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. 
Hmm. So we can coordinate that. Okay, that's a that's definitely a possibility. We could assault one of the gate. That's what we can use the resistance fires for. Is that we can all make a big assault on the gates to allow the armies to spill in. Do mm -hmm. the the traditional opening of the doors from the inside uh, ploy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perhaps uh, some guerrilla groups in the northern. Uh, half of the city to draw uh, a lot of the soldiers away so that when we manage to bring the army in they have little resistance took the words right out of my mouth there's no water around this right actually no it's a never been here before um, <laughs> so it's uh middenheim is built on a large rock basically uh let me see if so i can find are, a better so these are like uh, it's actually a giant chasm that surrounds the entire city. Ah, I see. Um, and if you remember from last time, uh, Cahill actually had an idea that they could um, perhaps send some forces themselves to cross the chasm by, you know, via climbing or whatever. Um, let me see if I can find, uh, like, a decent picture of... Because there are other decent pictures. This one is just really good for showing, like, the layout um but uh but yeah i don't really like that picture um so yeah it's it's a it's a giant chasm that kind of surrounds everything um thus guaranteeing the city will never have suburbs correct yeah and so uh another interesting thing from last session as well is um it's where it's it's also the refuse pit for Mindheim since they have a very restrictive um, area to kind of exist on. Uh, like bodies are not buried; they are kind of given ceremony into the chasm. Um, all the, the the sewers actually eventually end up dumping into the chasm, um, and also there's not nobody really knows how far down it goes uh because it's generally kind of like you know traditionally as things are layered by mist um and the bottom is not really able to be seen so uh what else is, is there is there any other conversation or is it is it do you guys kind of have an idea of what what's going on at the very least yeah, I, I like the idea of a distraction and then a big assault on the gates. Okay. And but, and what about leading up to um, leading up to that particular yeah. moment? Because there is certainly a uh, you guys time, have yeah. some time to, to kill. Now, that can totally be spent just preparing this one big assault, and that's totally cool with me. Um, or, you know, you guys have some, some ability to make to take some other actions as well. I actually, I have a fucking idea. How do you present this idea to your group? Exactly have, like that. I have a lot, I have... Oh god, your microphone. Jackson, you unplugged it. Jackson. Okay. Sorry, my doc unplugged it. I have an idea. Okay. I gather the group, and then I present... I take out a potion. <laughs> okay. This, everyone, is a love potion. I was gonna say... Why do you have that? I stare at Jericho. It's a legitimate question, I think. I stare at Jericho. <laughs> Continue. So... This is a love, I do quotation marks, potion. It's actually a very strong mix of aphrodisiacs. You know, it's really hard. <laughs> My proposition is we can poison the water supply with it, possibly. I'm not sure that's a big enough dose for an entire army. No, but this the place does have supplies. If I can reverse engineer it, we can basically taint the entire water supply.
single-handedly reverse engineer a potion and then produce it en masse enough that you can poison an entire army. Hey, it's spitballing, and it's not poisoning them, it's making them love each other. Yeah, I have to admit, I between, on the one hand, fantastic distraction, on the other hand, then we have to see what happens when ghouls all suddenly fall madly in love with each other, and I'm not sure I'm going to survive that. It's you hear a cacking noise things. from Morello. <laughs> it's always good to try new things, Jericho. Mm -hmm. This is something I wish not to try. Either way, I'm just presenting this. It's a powerful. I mean, it's a powerful item that we can use in our plans. If we could, we can use it to gain control of one person for a night. Oh, phrase. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> general concept of poisoning them. I'm. I'm actually pretty on board with that. I do All like right. the idea of taking some of them out. Not sure how well the mass effect would work or. You know, as I said, the consequences of uh, getting too ambitious with that. But Real quick, Jordan. Yes. Would I know of any poison that would work against creatures of chaos, things like that? So Cold specifically, water. traditional poisons don't work against creatures of chaos. Uh, but yeah, you know what does work, right? Holy water. Aelin. Aelin's not there, Ella. remember? Oh, yeah, That's why I asked if there was water, but okay. <laughs> yeah, let's... Well, no, yeah, why don't we fucking... I got shot down real button. quick on that one, but that's fine. I mean, no, if we can... Morella's Paladin's new spell thing can also create holy water. Oh, yeah, in that case, can we at all maybe replace water with holy water? Um, again, I think it's a dosage requirement. Well, how uh, much can you bless at a time? She's the high priest of Aldorf. It's true. I mean, that's I was trying to bless a whole moat, but there isn't a moat, so... <laughs> we don't need to Shitty go that fucking that. big. But how amazing would that have been? Just push them all off the wall into the moat. It'd be freaking okay, amazing. That would be gorgeous, yes. <laughs> right? Get, we that get a powerful mage. <laughs> we get them to make it rain. You bless the entirety of that rain. Right? The entire city is... I like the way you think, Farron. I'm I like totally on board with this plan. <laughs> now, where is the said individuals for this plan? I thought you said no. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Sorry, continue. However, like I said, though, and then I had the potion, we can use this to get information from someone, or get them to do what we we want, at least for a short time. You are also assuming that's going to work on whoever it is that we might want to dose with it. I use want in the loosest of terms. Everything has a risk to it. We don't know if it's going to succeed or not. I but I believe if you go into that much trouble, then perhaps you should just assassinate a leader instead of I mean, you can always interrogate them and then assassinate them. Boom. Hey. That's not a problem. It's just, I'm not sure... Hmm. I have no from problem prior, wasting this. From uh, what snooping around in the city Jericho has done before, would he have been able to learn anything about the kinds of people who are in charge here? What our ratio of humanoids to horrifying bone creatures is? So, um... A lot of, and and I described this to Hannibal too when he, um, uh, scried. When he scried, but yeah, a, there there are quite a few um, living beings in the city. Um, in fact, the undead are actually somewhat sparse, and you would know Jericho that. They are either uh, relegated to the lower kind of hunting down the resistance like you saw earlier, um, or they're actually outside the city. Because remember, there's no way that this city holds an entire army, right? Like, it's it's just right. not big enough to do that. Um, and so, as well, they specifically came, and you would know this just from snooping around, they didn't come to purge they came to capture and 
many lives were spared in return for service. And so there are probably some, and probably the way that you were able to kind of navigate as well, um, there are a bunch of servants and slaves now and um, general uh, people in service to these demons, but also the demons that look crazy are generally not so here. It's the more human-looking ones, like the uh, uh, succubi or the Irenes or, um, you know, other, other more humanoid-shaped and less intrusive beings exist here. Um, obviously, the necromancers and all of the, like, um, uh, human, dwarvish, whatever, spellcasters are here. Uh, in addition to the men of the north, the uh, the Norsemen are populate the city quite heavily. But as far as like the demons as we know them and undead, they're actually not. They're very sparse within the city. Perhaps only in a couple of the districts where they are relegated to. Well, I do love a good slave uprising. Yeah. I mean, you practically have a Khaleesi with you. So. <laughs> Who is it? See you, Hannibal. I knew it. What's the matter, dog? Um, um, speaking of which, uh, any interesting stories Aelin would have overheard that I might want to pass along? Yeah, I think that uh, I think that's going to require a check, but I, I think I want it to be an insight check for you to discern what is tall tale, what is truth, what is important, what is not. Not bad. Yeah, I think you do get some information from the people. Um, the ones who you've been kind of traveling with don't have a whole lot of new information, but some of the people here have been here since the beginning. Um, and I think that there are probably a couple of bullet points you take away. Um, the Resistance has inside operatives that work as slaves or servants. Um that you may be able to make contact with if you make an ice with them, obviously. And if you deem yourself trustworthy. Uh, and I think as well, you know that the, um, that anyone who picks up arms is obviously killed. But, uh, they're typically given a deal and the deal is usually consistent of, uh, you know, serve me with your soul or die. And that there are probably a couple of people who have taken that deal. And you know that it kind of irrevocably changes them and they become greater than they once were or perhaps more tainted than they once were, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, you also know that since... The takeover, the palace district, and every area surrounding it has been completely off limits um, to absolutely everyone. And there are constant, like, there's a constant ring of guardsmen and casters and uh, Norsemen that kind of protect that particular area. Um, you probably hear rumor of a great three headed beast. Uh, with a giant that rides him, which you would identify as uh, our friend. Uh, the one who was fighting with Kree and Hannibal. And I think that the last little bit of information you probably get is that within reason, the servants and slaves of that are that are serving with the people, are treated very well. Um, sometimes, perhaps, not even like servants. Uh, they're given full meals. They are given, uh, you know, places, warm places to sleep. They are allowed off time. They're allowed free time as well. Um, as with the understanding that they don't leave the city, obviously. Uh, and obviously, there's a there's a there's a range, right? Some are more harsh than others. But in general, if we were to evaluate slavery, 
Um, this is the, in quotes, good type. If that makes sense. Hot class. <laughs> Jesus, that statement. Out of context. I, I know, I know. I just, but you know what? It's probably, it's the, <laughs> I feel as though it was the best way to get the point across. Like, sure. it's um, still in, real in... fucked up and shouldn't ever happen, but the people aren't, like, being slaughtered. Sure. Um, in general, would I have gotten a sense as to the main tasks of these slaves? Like, are they all being given a, like, specific thing to work on? So, or is yeah. It just general? A lot of it is service, keeping things clean, serving sure, food, but, like, that kind of is stuff. Is there a main, like kind of bigger task that a larger group of them are being given to do on a daily and basis. Erecting a special sacrificial You know, like some sort of massive city. weapon or yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. are they making a Death Star? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, just throwing that out there. <laughs> so I That's think the real that uh, I mean, yeah, asking the real hard, questions. Hard hitting questions here. Um, I think with an eighteen, yeah, you can get a little bit of you can get a little tidbit. So it appears that um, the uh, the temple to uh, Ulrich, this large building right here in the middle, um, was defaced by the demons and undead that, that showed up, and the Norsemen. Um, and it's also been off limits, and some servants have gone in, um, and when they come out, they lose all memory of what they did. So I think specifically, you don't get information on a place. Ah, it's almost better. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that's like, that's probably the bordering on like, no, somebody's got to know something, right? Like, these people maybe don't, but somebody has to know something. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> cool. Um... So, so at some point, Aelin would divulge all of that information to... Yeah, so maybe you arrive at the conversation, right? Like, right as everybody's like, okay, you know, we have to figure out a way to get the gates open. Maybe we cause some distractions, pull soldiers away from the walls, open up the gates, let the armies pour in, and then allow the fighting to begin, right? Um, and you get there and you divulge. I, I assume you tell it pretty much verbatim. Oh yeah, I wouldn't hold anything back. There's no reason to. Yeah, so so what is everybody's initial... I would initial... particularly make sure that I'm speaking to Farron when I say this. <laughs> 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 Just so he doesn't feel left out anymore. <laughs> you get a very gleaming smile from him. Yeah, it's almost like I'm just telling you, Farron, and everyone else just happens to be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just so you know. You know, just point that out. <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, how does everybody react to that slew of information that was given? Those bastards. <laughs> Why could they be more evil? So, did you say that you were a... a priest? Me? No, her. I am. You are... <laughs> you're what? Never, never mind, I don't... I actually truly don't want to know. You are... <laughs> You are Aelin Ash River, Lady Ash River, High Priest of Shalia and Altdorf. Yes, the, the very same you speak. You haven't... Do people just tell you these things a lot? Because normally it takes a while to pick up that kind of information. Yes, you know, when you're genuinely kind to people, they tend to tell you things. I still haven't got my head around it. Jericho, so. Yeah, no, that sounds fake to me. I don't know what you. <laughs> I whisper to, I whisper to uh, Jericho. There's something wrong with that girl. <laughs> Jericho could swear for a moment that he can just see bluebirds settling on her shoulders. They're mm -hmm. doves, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, where did doves come from yeah. down here? Weird. <laughs> Ah, the sewer doves. <laughs> I'll kill them! Right, so we should probably make a priority to find out what's going on inside the temple as well, then. Yes, I did find that bit the most troubling. 
I mean, I don't suppose you could just walk up and ask them? It's... well... <laughs> oh lord, no, I was joking, I was joking. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I think that... Don't propose that shit to Aelin! <laughs> yeah, Daniela probably, like, looks at Aelin's, like, robes bedecked with the crest of Shalya all over it, and is like, shakes her head, no. That's not what's going to happen. She's literally glowing. Uh, so, with with all of that information divulged, um, is it time to go speak to, to Mayor Garfield? What's the plan? I think we have a few plans. We need to decide what order we want to take them in. Okay, I think that's... It's going to be tough, but liberate the slaves. I think the slaves are probably going to be capable of liberating themselves if they can have access to any kind of armaments. Construction mm -hmm. tools aren't bad. And if we can cause some chaos among the people who are uh, overseeing them. So that probably meshes quite well with the glance at Aelin. Assassination plans. Fans? Don't worry people about have that. It coming. It's fine. Yeah, it's cool. Don't worry. It's gonna be just you know. Don't worry about it. All right. So, so freeing slaves. That's that's certainly one part. Finding out what's happening inside the temple. That's probably one of our first priorities because Killing that might people. change what else we care about. Possibly talking to those who are acting. She would use air quotes, but we don't know what air quotes are. Um, as slaves, that seems like something the two of you would be adept at doing? Getting their ear? Yes, Farron. Again, I'm only speaking to Farron, so... Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. <laughs> During all this, uh, I think Marilla just asked, do we have any information on Anders? <laughs> whether he's actually within the city or not. Hey guys, yeah. before you showed up, did I call it or did I call it? Oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> literally the that only thing he asked about. Um, I can find out if you give me a short rest. I can so possibly find out. I think notably, Aelin, you didn't hear anything R remember about that. The, well, sh sure. And I guess Aelin wouldn't no, not specifically. You, I mean, like you know that the palace has been. I was gonna say. I mean, limits. the palace is kind of on yeah. lockdown. High alert. And yeah. one would assume, or could assume, right. however, maybe he's more crafty than. Yeah, that. but it's I it's still know. odd that people wouldn't have said anything if they had seen, because like, Anders strikes a figure. He's like, he's got that aura around him that anyone who looks upon him knows he is important. Well, that would make even more sense that he's there then, right? Because literally no one has been there. Correct. So. Anywho. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I wasn't here for that. Uh, it's okay. Do apologize. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, conceivably, he's there. Or maybe he's in the temple, right? Like, maybe that's one where he's what, taking... Where no one knows what's going on, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, that's also a possibility. There's two locations, yes. Yeah. For all intents and purposes. Indeed. Um... So, from what it sounds like, we want to figure out a way to perhaps free slaves to create more bodies for us, uh, and then figure out where Anders is, uh, figure out what's going inside the temple, and then plan an action for when the armies arrive to assist them in getting in. Because that's kind of like the, that's the overall mission, right? That's like what we came here to right. do, but we have all these other things to complete prior to yeah. that to make them to either easier the or harder in. to get the army in we need to do a b and c yeah so does that sound mm -hmm. sound like what everybody kind of uh, ends up on and agrees on yeah sounds good okay so you uh you guys head off down to where like that marketplace that I described in this little village is and uh do you recognize him, Jericho? Uh, he's kind of a uh, kind of a rotund man, although has the look of 
of someone who was large but has not eaten well in the past month and so like even though the the kind of the the big belly and um girth is there his cheeks are kind of sunken his neck is kind of thin um you know his the 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 skin appears to be hanging a little bit lower um looks a bit malnourished uh, more so than I would think most other people that you've seen in the town. Um, and he's got a great big mustache that covers, like, you know, seemingly, like, half of his face, right? Um, and he, uh, he, when you, when you arrive, he's probably, like, handing rations out to someone. Um, and they say, ah, yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And they continue walking off. Um, and he kind of just guffaws. And he's, oh, yes, yes. Um, he sees the group of you approach. Uh, who addresses him? So I mean, Morella seems like the most appropriate one. Yeah, so he probably starts it off by saying, Ho! Oh, newcomers to the village. It is good to have you. Yes, are you here for your daily rations? We must take down your names, of course. She shakes her head and says, Uh... Wasn't Mayor Garfield? Is that who I'm speaking with? Yes. Okay. Well, that's what the people call him. Sure, sure. Right. Mayor Garfield, is it? Aye, that's my name. And who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? She clears her throat. You are in the presence of Morella Fairheart, daughter of the Count of Matthias Fairheart. Of Tablaheim. Yeah, and I think I think he says uh, he probably like whips into a, a very gracious, um, very probably uh, practiced bow, and he says to be in the presence of what does he say? To be in the presence of nobility is a great honor, my lady. What can I do for you? Perhaps if you need a place to rest. We need your help more than anything. Aye, and that I can I can offer as well. Tell me, and, what can I help with? You know, she explains the situation of we need help getting yeah, an his, army into the city. His significantly bushy brow kind of furrows the longer and longer you speak. Um, and he kind of nods and he says, Ah, yes. Well, you understand if I say that Causing problems is not something we'd like to do. We are just trying to survive, but I understand the importance of what you and your friends are doing. Perhaps, perhaps it would be best if, well, yes, yes, I think so. Very well, come, come with me. I will, I will show you to where you may perhaps gain more information from. Um, and he kind of gets up, and he, you can see him, like, motion to somebody else who's standing to the side to, like, take his place in the line. Uh, and leads you kind of down the tunnels a little ways, and uh, you enter into, like, this very kind of hastily, crudely cut out portion of the of the wall that kind of leads into a little cavern area. Uh, and it's got, like, a, like a, a stick with, like, some ragged cloth kind of hanging over it. Uh, and as he kind of pushes... The cloth to the side. Um, you can see that there are uh, there are two women in here. Uh, one is perhaps in her late teens. Uh, the other one is perhaps in her about the same age as as uh, Mayor Garfield. Um, and she's bouncing uh, a young boy on her knee um, while the the other woman watches. And uh, he walks in. And he says, "Ah, Trudy, yes. Can you please give us a moment? We must speak privately." Um, and she kind of, like, grabs the babe and swaddles him up quickly and, uh, throws him over her shoulder and she says, Ah, oh, yes, darling. Very well. Um, and she grabs the, the young girl, the, the teenager by the shoulder and kind of leads her out. And, um, I think that as she's walking them out, um, as they walk by, uh, you, Morella, 
um, the young teenager kind of, uh, she grabs onto your arm, and her grasp is firm. Um, it's like iron shackles. Um, and she kind of just, like, looks at you. And there's a moment where you're like, what, what's going on? And then she just releases you. And is continued being escorted out. Uh, but it's a very odd, like, transpiring that occurs. Okay. And once once they've exited... Um, and by the way, everybody, like, sees that as well. Like, it's, it's obvious, it's not hidden. Um, you all are escorted in, and... You can see that uh, Mayor Garfield kind of pulls out like a um, like a scroll from uh, like kind of notches that are cut in the in the the stone wall. Um, he pulls out a scroll and kind of unravels it and kind of flattens it out on the ground um, and uses like a couple of stones to uh, put down the corners. And you can see it's kind of like a like a crudely drawn map area. Um, of kind of the underground and like the village and and like entrances and exits and stuff like that, and uh, you can see that it has like three clear paths that kind of lead upwards. Um, and he says, ah, "These these three here, these are how our men get to and from the surface. You understand, it is quite risky, but supplies when they get low, we must acquire new ones, and the spies, as they say." can only take so much without being caught. We would prefer their information. But I know that these three paths, they are safe. This one here, and he kind of like points to it, leads to the park in the merchant district. Comes out right next to the fountain. There is a gutter to the sewer system. It is, uh, used to be locked, but it is no longer. This one here, and he points to another one. He's like, it leads to the auditorium in the, by the East Gate. Well, traditionally by the North Gate, but it's in the East Gate district. You, you understand. And this one will lead up just behind it. It has been safe for many days now. And this one here, it leads to the wind. The wind is the, used to be the slummy part of town, you understand, but... It has since grown better in these days. There are less people to occupy it, let's say. But this one is also dangerous. It seems that the area is infested with the lesser denzines of this evil atrocity that has been plaguing our city. The undead and demons, they crawl through this wreckage a bit. That is unfortunate, but the entrance is safe enough. They seem to not be smart enough to come down it. But tell me, what other information do you require besides of methods to reach the surface? And she thinks about that uh, before looking at the others. Uh, seeing as how they have been the ones planning uh, most of this uh, upcoming operation. Hey, you guys can talk. Yeah. Switch is great. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. So close. We were so close. No, we weren't. <laughs> So what do you? So, yeah, what do you? What what other information do you guys try and acquire from him? So I think it's time to lay down our plan. Yeah, like how do right. you how do you present it to him? If you've got people who have been heading to the surface uh, on supply runs, do you have anyone that you think might be more willing to join in on some sabotage, espionage, those sorts of things? Yeah, I think he nods and he says, "Yes, I can perhaps talk some of the." Some of the spies into it. They have been itching for something to do besides gather information. What have they been gathering apart from uh, ways up and down? Well, you understand that most of our work is designed around survival, not assault. But they tell me that 
daily there are caravans that come in and out of the city from the north gate. Seems that whatever they are bringing to and from, we never get to see, but there is something occurring. They all lead into the Temple of Ulrich. So they're act uh, out of character, though. Is this the first that I've heard of people actually entering or leaving the city? Um. Y yes and no, I think. Uh, I think that it is not uncommon for, like, the soldiers and stuff to come to and from. Um, because remember, like, only about half of the if not even half of the army, because their army's a little bit larger than uh, expected, but not even, like, half of the army can fit inside the city. And so right. it might be people just, like, coming to and from. Um, in general, it might be them, uh, like, bringing in supplies for their own people, right? Like, that's totally a thing that might be might be occurring, right. um, and that would be common, um, because, you know, they need to live, too. So, I mean, yeah, yes and no. You, you know that, uh, that there have been comings and goings, but... But this particular thing... Yeah, still... perhaps not this particular coming and going. Well, you. that's promising. It's fucking loud! Anyways. We're looking for ways to throw some chaos into their ranks before the army arrives. Whatever it is that they're supplying here seems like it's an obvious target. Yeah, I think I think If you're not sure what they're bringing in, I assume that it's going to either the palace or the temple? Hi, yes. I think that they do talk of traditional supplies, but those are the ones that perhaps you are interested in, the ones that we do not know of where they are going or where they are coming from. Well, we know where they are going, well, but not what it is. We might want to sabotage some of the others as well, but I always like to get the unknowns out of the way quickly. Yeah. Um, so... What, uh, what else? Is there any other questions that you guys ask him? Um, he'll obviously, like, hook you up with some, some help. You can, you can have, like, the resource of the spies to help sabotage stuff, but you'll have to, like, denote how you want them to do that, when you want them to do that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe even go assist them yourselves. Who knows? I think the only other question we could have right now is whether there's anything that your people are in need of. Aye, well, we're always in need of food. Other supplies, like fuel for our for our lighting. I do not wish my people to be trapped in the dark forever. Certainly we would be at a disadvantage. Other than that, we have fresh water. Comes up from the springs deep down in the ground. Luckily, we were able to tap into it. Other normal things, perhaps... General supplies, you understand. Medicines. Herbs. I think that well, myself I would do with a good spot of tea. With any luck, it won't be too many more days before... No one has to be hiding down here in the sewers again anyway. Yes, that would be much preferable, of course. And you understand that while I, I wish I could help, I am but a tavern owner. I cannot fight. I wouldn't worry about it too much. You're probably... <laughs> I think people who are capable of running an operation like this are probably in less supply than people who can hold a weapon. Careful, he's a vampire. <laughs> Yeah. They're all vampires. He pulls out some wine and starts drinking it. Um, I'm kidding. Nonchalantly. Nonchalantly. Just always. Um, yeah, and... Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and then he morphs into uh, Lady Sylar. Uh, Do it. <laughs> Jugs on you, predictable. <laughs> yeah, predictable. Per the usual. Um, so I think that that like barring that conversation, there's obviously some details that are hashed out. Uh, but I want a uh, Farron. Roll me a perception check. Okay. Good. Uh, I'm going to message you something and then see how you react to it real quick. You know this is... Um, no survivors, oh. you say. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you're the first to realize it. Do you say anything? Because there was a conversation that was had about not. Yeah. Um, I think you can clearly see Farron kind of just suddenly frantic looking around and then probably give out a very heavy sigh. Um, yeah, he doesn't draw attention to it as such. Okay. It's juncture. All right. Uh, and I think that's a great place to uh, take our break, wouldn't you say? That's awesome. I'm going to go install Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Farseer needs to uh, have a cup of tea as well. Indeed. If there was any. Indeed. Uh, so, let's be back at uh, 10 after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sound good? All right. Okay. We'll see everybody then. Bye. Alrighty. Bye. All right, guys. We're, that's it for the first half. We're going to get into the second half here in just a few minutes. If you're on YouTube, just stay tuned. It's going gonna, it's gonna to autoplay. YouTube's super awesome like that. And uh, stay tuned. Be right back. Bye.